Hello, everybody. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording. Today, I want to show you a Native Instruments Playbox, specifically um, as a tool to create samples for things like the Octatrack, because uh, this thing just sounds amazing. And I have been, like you can see here, I've been making these little bits, these little bits and bobs. Oh, so good. So what you just heard was me playing drums from Playbox. Apparently has drums in it. I didn't know that until I just got to this. I've been going through alphabetically the presets that come with it and just sampling uh, little bits from each one at 90 BPM. Um, and I'm going to put these all into the Octatrack or whatever sampler I want, maybe the Morphogene, and I'm just going to go nuts with them. Okay, so here's the main interface. Um, it's basically a sampler-based thing. It uses all these different samples and creates these complex... Um, sample-based instruments that have multiple layers to them, uh, ARP effects, as you can hear, lots of effects, and these layered samples, and um, these chord systems. So if we go into our chord thing here, we'll see that we have these chords. And every time I press a key, you can see down here this key mapping. You can see the red area is the keys. Um, it plays these chords that are listed here. You can change the chords. So if you find a set of uh, sounds that you like, but you think the chords are whack, you can either write your own or pick a different chord progression. Um, so there's different categories here. Oh God, so good. So cool sounding. Jesus. For all you people talking about how the DOS sucks or yeah, that this kind of thing is cheating, f you. <laughs> I've been thinking about this a lot because like for me um, on the Octatrack lately, I've been pulling from old zero G sample CDs to make like old school beats. Listen to what I've been doing on the Octatrack. <laughs> So that's what I've been doing for the last like five days or so. I've been making, I've been diving into the Octatrek as a uh, sample based performance tool. It's going a little rough, honestly. This thing's weird, but, but I'm highly, highly dependent on um, complex pad like sounds. That I can cut up and. use as seeds for songs. So uh, the Octatrack has been instrumental in that for me. Um, and when I got a hold of Playbox, or when I heard about Playbox, I was like, holy shit, this sounds like the exact kind of stuff that I have been asking for for the Octatrack. I've been using old Zero G sample CDs. I've been using um, the Altered States collection, which is like an old 90s or 2000s sample collection of weird pads and stuff. And it's great, but I can write my own chords and stuff like this in here. And there's this sort of modern sheen to the Playbox stuff that I really, really like. So I'm excited about it. It's, it's a way for me to create really cool content for my samplers that um, I would not be able to do in another way. Uh, the sound design going on behind Playbox is wild, and I'm literally just playing presets. There's no shame in playing presets. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. They're fucking assholes. So uh, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to just play a little bit. Um, these are all supposed to be little track starters, little seeds, right? Oh yeah, one thing you'll probably need to do with these is turn off this goddamn pan thing. Um, the magic pan. Uh, that is in effects in stereo. A ton of these have like a crazy uh, LFO on the pan. 
and I don't know why. It's like all over the place. It's like, y'all need to chill with this panning, please. All right, so let's go ahead and record some MIDI and then we'll just immediately sample it. I don't like that minor uh, diminish that was in here. I believe that's, let's see, we'll find it real quick. Quantize, uh, I think it's this one. Yeah, that's like an end chord. Uh, let's try B. Maybe we'll go G, B here. Now these notes don't correspond with the actual chords being played. That is dictated by the key right here uh, on the device. You can change this um, and also the chords themselves. So this is the uh, root key and then the chords uh, uh, that you pick from um, in the chord section come from that. So pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, that's good. So what I'm gonna do is immediately go to my sample channel right here. I'm just gonna hit record. It's gonna immediately resample from Playbox. Uh, what I'm going to do for all of these is I'm going to make them a, a clean loop. So I'm going to get rid of this little tail here. And uh, that way, it, when I bring it into the Octatrack or something else, I know that it can be evenly uh, sliced up for the next thing. All right, next up, we're just going to keep on iterating a little bit through the uh, different presets. Um, that's, that's all we're doing here. Let's see, did I miss some good ones? Let's find out. Uh, last was drums. It is, uh, it's good. It's, it's good, friends. Uh, let me hear what some of the other drums sound like real quick. Oh, I like that one a lot better. That's freaking cool. Jesus Christ. God damn. Let me see the chords. So there is an E minor chord. greatest finger drummer. Don't you forget that. drum kit. Uh, we'll do a few more of these and yeah, uh, maybe we'll try putting one on the Octatrack and uh, seeing what we do with that. Would that be fun? Should we do that?
There's some really cool stuff that happens in these, and I haven't dug deep enough into the plugin yet to really understand what's going on. Um, but like the way the uh, the layers like shift around, um, you can get like different hits on every single note, um, different combinations of the hits. You'll have some, some samples will, will change their layer. It's really, really wild um, and very, very surprising uh, in a good way. Yeah, see how the vocal stuck out there? There's just so much layering going on. It's very, very cool. One more, and then we'll uh, we'll put one of these in the Octatrack and see how that works out. And I'll give you a little, like, just a little Octatrack test, taste, taste test? Octatrack taste test. I'm not gonna lick the Octatrack. <laughs> That's disgustingly cool. Beautiful. So uh, one of the things we can actually do with the Octatrack, which is really nifty, is um, yeah, we can slice these up uh, into grids and stuff like that, but you can also use slices to playback drum kits. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm actually gonna sample this playback, dr uh, playback drums uh, drum kit. So in this kind of sense, it is important to, to make your life easier on the Octatrack to keep the same amount of space between each one of the uh, notes that you're sampling, um, just because uh, otherwise um, slicing becomes a bit more of a pain. It's just so, f it's beautiful. You know what? I'm gonna probably gonna get a lot of shit from people in this video for enjoying this kind of thing. Um, but I think y'all are, are missing the point. This stuff um, is is astounding. Like when people used to buy like the Insonic uh, workstations and some of the like crazy PCM based stuff, or let's say the DX7 or uh, any of the hard to program, but really good sounding um, devices from back in the day, they just played the presets, my friends. It's not like they were doing sound design. And uh, yeah, if you like any music that was written during that time, then you like presets. The fact of the matter is, is like presets just keep getting better. And um, I, I think that we should remove the stigma of presets being um, a place to start with stuff. Because ultimately, the moment that you start slicing stuff up and repurposing it, you're doing what people have done with samples um, for forever. Like, it doesn't matter where the sample comes from, you know, as long as it's not like... As long as it's not like illegal, you know, but even then, no, you don't really. Yeah. So, uh, I'm going to export uh, this stuff. I'm not going to make you uh, wait for that. Um, I'm just going to export these chunks and uh, then we'll uh, do a quick little jam on the Octatrack, I guess. And I think that'll be the video. See you in a second. So, I converted all the samples into loops um, and I converted them to 44116 bit. And uh, now I've got them in the Octatrack. So I'm just gonna pick uh, some stuff. So I'm loading it to uh, track one. I have a template where everything is set up as a flex machine, except for track eight, which is our master. So let's turn slicing on and let's go into our slice grid and set this to 16. And now we can go into our trig mode and go to slices. I don't like this sample that much. Let's go into a different one. This is trying to time stretch it for some reason, but um, that's because I have my tempo still set to uh, 120. We know we're working at 
90. So let's go ahead and set it to 90. So cool. So now we can uh, play it back all choppy style. So let's give ourselves a, a little metronome for. Go ahead and quantize that. Cool. Uh, my second track, I usually do a beat on. So let's go grab one of those uh, drum kits that we uh, made. Um, and I'll show you how we can use slices to play back a series of drum uh, hits in a slice thing. Cool. There's that, uh, there's that kit that we made near the middle. So uh, slice grid, is it eight slices? That looks about right. Yeah, so this is a way you can make kits in the octave track. You basically create even spaced drum hits and then use the slicer to uh, be able to play them back. Now, the third track on here I usually use for um, another uh, melodic sliced hook kind of thing. So uh, let's do that. We know it needs to be minor. Yeah, let's use that. That's kind of cool. All right, let's get the pitch worked out. Uh, so we're going to do that by just spamming the one key, which is our first slice, and changing the rate. So we have a, a bit of a complex chord progression, so we're getting a little bit of dissonance, but we're trying to minimize it. And we can actually minimize it more by going into our filter here and uh, turning up the bass of our filter, which sounds like this. So full bass, turn that up. Maybe we'll give us a little bit of effect, some reverb. And maybe some distortion. I've been using a lot of distortion on the Octatrack because it sounds really good. Let's go into here. I've been doing a compressor, just really blowing it out, and then a little bit of uh, the dark reverb. Yeah, and then on the master, I have been doing some of the distortion, uh, so the lo-fi effect. We're going to add a little bit of grit. I really wanted to pump and feel kind of nasty, you know? All right, next up is a bass line. So that's what I use for track four. Go in here and I have all of these, these synth explorer things. I can't remember where I got them from. I think it was from Loop Masters. But basically what these are is a whole bunch of single hit. Um, oh, you know what? Hey, let's see if we can use Lego Welt. Let's, let's, let's use our friend Lego Welt instead. Lego Welt, these are free samples. I've talked about these before. They're really, really good. Something like that. Wow, it's not even like, it's not even making a lot of nasty zero crossing sounds. It's pretty good. All right, uh, we'll go into our effects. Distortion. Yeah, Jesus, that's a big old bass. These two, I usually do leads. You know what, let's just do the whole thing. Let's just do the whole thing. I'll show you the whole process I've been going through with the Octatrack with this stuff. Uh, 
Victory Park. So one of the things I like to do with uh, Seven here is um, I like to make it super stereo, and I do that by sending the... I could use an effect, but I don't want to waste my effects. I like to use a compressor in, on this one. So I have to go to amp balance, turn the depth up, turn the multiplier way up, and then... So that's without it. All right, just like it's weird and stereo now, kind of almost sounds audio rate modulated. I really like that. For these, I usually grab a uh, compressor and I just squish the f out of it. All the attack down, threshold down, ratio all the way up. I want it to be nasty. And then all you have left, uh, for me at least, um, I usually iterate on this pattern, but uh, what I will do here is, uh, theoretically, I could come in and start doing scene stuff, so. this next scene a stuttery one. <laughs> that one last scene, uh, I don't know, let's reverse everything, shall we? My video is long enough. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope that's fun for you. Uh, Playbox is dope. Um, yeah, uh, Octrack's pretty cool too. Samples are awesome. Everything is awesome. You're awesome. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Beans Recording, and I hope you have a wonderful day.